So the 2020 draft was interesting. A lot of people think highly of what the Browns did in it. And I think highly of what the Browns did in it as well. But to get a clearer look at why I'm excited for what the Browns did and why I like the individual picks that the Browns made, I'm going to actually grade each individual pick based off three criteria. The first criteria is going to be value. How much value did you get out the pick? Did you get good value? Um, so that's going to be the first criteria out of 10. The second criteria is going to be the out-the-box score, which pretty much means how ready are they right now? Can they play in an NFL game after just one NFL training camp? Are they going to be starters, contributors? Where do they rank on that scale, which I do think is important? And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, upside, which is clear. It's upside. How much potential does this prospect have? So without further ado, let's jump into it. So the Browns' first pick of the draft this year was Jedrick Wills, and I'm going to give this a value rating of 10 out of 10. Jedrick, I think, is an absolute steal at 10. I think he was the best offensive tackle on the board. I think he also might be one of the better prospects that we have had in a while, just that there were so many good prospects this year that that part kind of got diluted. But I think in any other draft, we're talking about this guy going 2, 3, or 1 overall easy but we got him at 10 again absolute steal again this is what most draft experts that i like and i respect think is by far the best tackle and the most ready tackle which rolls into his out the box score which is going to be a 9 out of 10 jedrick is ready to go i think he can start an nfl game right now let alone after one training camp going against miles garrett for a month or two um so i think he's ready to go right now um what sets him apart from some of the other tackles is his technique um he has very good feet for somebody who's just 20 years old he has very good feet for somebody who's coming out of college period let alone just be 22 years old his ability to stay parallel of the line of scrimmage is key and again he's 20 years old He's this polished from a technique standpoint at just 20 years old that shows that he has potential to grow and get even better, which is scary from a technical standpoint. He is also a good athlete. He's not an amazing athlete. He's not Makai Becton, who's an absolute freak as an athlete at the offensive tackle position. But again, he has those technical traits that Makai Becton just does not have right now. Um, I think he's going to draw some penalties early on. I think that is going to continue to be a trend that he had um, at Alabama. He does draw some penalties, but as skilled as he is at the age of 20, I think there's a lot of room to grow in that area. And honestly, that's a forgivable kind of bump that you can have. Um, even Joe Thomas got the occasional hold or got the occasional penalty here and there. So, you know, I'm not going to really hold that against Jedrick here. Um, and I also, I think one of the underrated things is that Jedrick did all this domination, all this um, growth with a left-handed, short, mobile quarterback, which is important to note because those are the specific type of quarterback that give – offensive linemen headaches routinely they're notorious for that for being difficult to block for especially mobile quarterbacks especially left-handed quarterbacks but Jedrick was able to handle that well so that's why he has a 9 out of 10 out the box score his upside is an 8 out of 10 that might sound low to some people but it's just because he's so developed right now like he's so good right now he has such good technique right now that he can only get so much better. There's only so much more room to get to a ceiling. Not saying that his ceiling isn't ridiculously high like everybody else in this draft class, but he's just so close to it from a technique standpoint that he doesn't really have much more room to go up with, which is a pretty good thing. I mean, the same thing, the same exact thing was said about Joe Thomas when he went third overall to Cleveland in 2007. It sounds like that one worked out. Um, Jedrick is going to be strong. He's going to be tough. He's not going to be the athletic freak or the athletic marvel that like a Tyron Smith is or that like a Mekhi Becton has the potential to become. But 
he, he has the potential to become as technically sound and as good as a pass blocker uh, mentally and physically as Joe Thomas. I'll take that potential. That's pretty good potential. So Jedrick Wills, I would give him an A-plus grade overall. Pretty high marks in all three categories. He deserves them. Great pick at 10. Ecstatic that the Browns were able to get him at 10. Um, I think this is going to be an absolute steal when we look at it from years down. The next guy that the Browns selected is Grant Delpit. Uh, Grant Delpit's an interesting prospect. Some people thought he was a top 15 talent. Some people thought he was a second round talent. And that's why he gets a value grade of 8 out of 10. Again, to me, absolutely amazing. Unthought of that Delpit could fall to 44. That the Browns could trade back, get an extra third round pick, and still get Grant Delpit in the second round. That's unbelievable to me and a lot of people that I listen to. But... Nonetheless, it happened, and it's not like it was a surprise for some people. And Zerline had him as a second-round prospect um, and projected him to go in the second round. So, again, Delpit's, um, Delpit's range of what people thought of him really differs greatly between how much you value his 2018 tape versus what he did in 2019. And it's not like he was terrible in 2019. He just wasn't as great in 2019. And that's going to factor into his out-the-box score, which I put at a 7 out of 10. Um it really is going to depend on which Grant Delpit shows up. Is it going to be 2018 Grant Delpit or is it going to be 2019 Grant Delpit? Because 2018 Grant Delpit is not just a day one starter. He's a day one difference maker. He is a absolute force at that free safety position. He's able to use that athleticism, able to use those ball hawk instincts um, and really make a difference as the free safety of this Browns defense with the cover of Carl Joseph being his strong safety. Now, 2019, Grant Delpit, that guy's a role player. That guy is somebody who's going to be able to hop in at the slot, play a little bit of corner, you know, kind of be your your guy that you can kind of throw anywhere while you have somebody else holding down the free safety position because they're just going to be more consistent and make smarter decisions back there. Um, so, again, the, the floor for Grant Delpit on day one is somebody who's going to contribute. Um how much he contributes, if he starts, if he is a difference maker, all that depends on which Grant Delpit shows up. So if the ankles are really the only problem for Grant Delpit, you're going to look at a difference maker coming out of the second round at pick 44, um, which is tremendous. Um, but the risk could be you could get something a little bit more underwhelming, um, you know, somebody who's more of a role player instead of a shutdown um, free safety. So... That is kind of the situation with Grant Delpit out the box. The floor, year one contributor, the ceiling, year one difference maker. Um, so pretty good value, pretty good out the box score with Grant Delpit. And then we go to the upside. Well, the upside should be clear. He is a guy who could be a top 15 pick if he just showed up like he did in 2018, if he was just healthy like he was in 2018. And if that 2018 version of him shows up. Because that dude is a difference maker. That dude is lights out. That dude is one of the best safeties in football. Um, it wouldn't be a stretch to say that he can make a Minka Fitzpatrick type impact on this Browns defense if he can be as good as he was in 2018. Plus, get better from obviously being in an NFL camp for you know a few months. So that 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 upside is there now the issue with grant delp it's like a lot like greedy williams right greedy williams had the tape of being like a shutdown corner um a year before he came out and in the second year he had some tackling issues but he kind of wrapped those up had a solid rookie year it was more of a contributor i don't know if that's more about steve wilkes or that's more about greedy williams but that's how they used him um and something similar can happen to grant delp to where he's not going to be um the force that we want him to be early on and that he's going to have to wait and develop into that and that in his first year he's going to be more of a rotational guy um but that 2018 tape it just doesn't lie it's phenomenal it really is um and the upside if that can be him going forward is insane so i'm going to give the pick of grant delpit based on all these factors a b rating um some room for improvement some people would have preferred Winfield here. I preferred Delpit. Delpit's my guy that I wanted here. Um, but the concerns about the consistency and who he's going to be and which Delpit's going to show up um, push this down from being an A-plus pick. The next guy is Jordan Elliott, the defensive tackle out of Mizzou. Um, I'm going to give this a value grade of 8 out of 10. Uh, one of the more controversial picks because some people really dislike the talk of 
Elliott being a first rounder. Um, and there are some people who really thought Elliott should have been a first rounder. Um, pro football focus is definitely somebody that was pushing for Elliott to be a first round pick. I don't think he was a first round pick. I think he fell kind of in the spot that he should have late second, early third um, with the Browns here. He does have an explosive first step. He does win some of a lot of his battles. But when it comes to his athleticism, it doesn't show up all the time. So on that first step, he looks athletic as all get off. But you know, when it's not a, when he doesn't get that first step and he has to use his athleticism in other ways, he looks pretty pedestrian. Um, and there's a lot of room to grow. They're also very bad off of double teams. Um, not strong enough to really handle the double teams. And there are some questions about his motor um, and overall athleticism. Again, he's quick. He can get the first step, but he doesn't he doesn't have consistency with that athleticism, with that quickness throughout everything that he does, which does concern some people. Now, his out-the-box score to me is going to be low. It's going to be a 6.5 out of 10. I think he is meant to be a developmental piece here um, in the third round. I don't think he is going to be a day-one starter. Um, I don't think he's meant to be a day-one starter. Now, you can develop this guy, you can get him a little bit bigger, and then you have something that's going to be equal to, in a couple years, a first-round pick um, to replace Sheldon Richardson or replace Larry Ogunjobi. But as of right now, I, I wouldn't start him. I don't think he's a day-one starter. I think he has some issues there. Um, I think he's going to be good to be in the rotation probably behind Sheldon Richardson um, and then maybe sometimes alongside Richardson, not often, and maybe alongside uh, Billings and Richardson in like heavy fronts. Um, but I wouldn't expect a day one starter out of Jordan Elliott. I do expect kind of a contributor, but not really a significant contributor, just a guy who's going to rotate in there, similar to like how a Chad Thomas contributed in his second year, not his first year, but in his second year. Um, so that's why he doesn't have a great out-the-box score, but his upside is an 8 out of 10. Um, he has great upside, especially is where the Browns are going to put him. He's going to be a one technique in an even front. Um, so... He's going to have room to grow there. His explosive first step will give him an edge as a pass rusher in situational uh, moments. And if he can develop, add some strength, add some technique, and get more consistent with his athleticism um, when it's not the first step, then you can develop him into a really good defensive lineman. And I think that's his upside. I don't think he's going to be a game breaker. He's not going to be an all pro, but he's going to be a very, very, very strong, high quality starter for the Cleveland Browns. Um, so with all that being said i'm gonna get the pick of jordan elliott a c plus um the potential is there he's just not going to contribute early on i do think that browns need people who are going to be able to contribute at defensive tackle earlier on than a jordan elliott would be but i don't think he's going to be a complete liability i don't think he's going to be a guy who's going to be consistently inactive i do think you can put him in certain packages in certain situations and you can use his size um inside which the browns have lack so i'll give that draft uh picked a c plus again that doesn't mean i don't like the pick that just means you know it's a pretty good pick c plus is like you know better than average all right so the next pick is the linebacker out of lsu jordan phillips um i'm gonna give this a value grade of seven out of ten just a normal uh, value out of him he went right where he was supposed to you didn't reach for him but you got him right where you could have got him a uh, very athletic linebacker very raw um from a technique standpoint and from a coverage ability standpoint so it reminds me of mac wilson a lot um malik harrison was on the board which i know is going to draw the ire of a lot of ohio state fans but you know if you're going to be prioritizing athleticism like the cleveland browns seem to in the linebacking um room then and, you know, they should probably with Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow being in the division, then maybe this is more of a sound choice. But I get the argument that um, Malik Harrison might have been a better fit for what you need because you already have the athletic Mac Wilson. Um, but we'll see how all of this pans out. His out the box score is actually going to be higher than I think most people think of him. I think he has a seven out of ten out the box ready to go score. He reminds me a lot of Mac Wilson. I think he's going to be ready faster than more, more more people think especially be used in the situations that the browns might want to use them um 
But that being said, the Browns should sign a veteran to start at linebacker. I don't think he's starting at linebacker. I don't think he should um, because you don't want to have, what, Taki Taki and Wilson, two second-year guys, and then a rookie um, all starting in your linebacking core. You want some experience there, so I would hope that they would sign a veteran sometime before the season starts to kind of plug in there at the starting linebacker role. Again, linebackers aren't horribly difficult to find so it's feasible that they can find a linebacker still um in the remaining bits of free agency but i do think phillips has some day one potential especially in rundowns and when the browns need to stop the run he's a sea ball hit ball guy he's guy can fill some gaps um and do them very fast so i do think he has some strong potential there and then on upside i'm going to give him a grade of eight out of ten i think he can be as useful as like a Joe Schobert was for the Browns, but kind of in reverse when it comes to a skill set um, situation because Joe Schobert was a good pass defender, terrible in the run. Um, I think he's going to be opposite of that. I think he's going to be very good against the run, but a, but a mediocre coverage guy. Even at his best, he might be decent, but I don't think he's ever going to be good. Um, the instincts there, they're just not there. Um, all in all, he's a solid prospect, and if all else Fails. He can be a productive special teamer and rotational linebacker in rundown. So I don't think that's terrible value um, given the worst case scenario for him. And that's why I'm going to give this grade um, for J Jacob Phillips a B. All right, now we're going to jump to Harrison Bryant, who I think is a tremendous pick here. Um, they got him, I think, in the fifth round here. Um, value 8 out of 10. Not a great tight end class, but I think this might be mo the most intriguing prospect. I think he's the most promising one. I like him the most out of everybody that I've looked at. Um, his out-the-box score, I think, is tremendously high compared to what people think of him. Some people see him as a developmental tight end. I think he's pretty ready to go, honestly. And I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10 out-the-box score. I think he has good enough size, good enough hands. Um not a crisp route runner, not a great route runner, but a good enough route runner, um, especially like when he's how he's going to be used in a twin tight end set and maybe a little bit at fullback as a pass catcher on some uh, sets. I think he's also pretty nasty and pretty willing as a blocker. And this is somebody who could develop and you can throw him right into the mix at that second tight end spot and really push David Njoku, especially if David Njoku doesn't become more consistent from a pass catching um, and blocking standpoint. Um, so David Njoku should probably be worried about this guy because this guy is credibly coming for the spot that David Njoku is also competing for, and I think he has a really good chance of taking that spot if David Njoku's not careful because Harrison Bryant already is a better blocker already is a more consistent catcher of the football than David Njoku. So David Njoku has some ground to make up there. Again, David Njoku more dynamic as a route runner, more dynamic as a receiver, but they signed Austin Hooper to do all those things, so it's kind of irrelevant how good he is at those positions. They kind of need somebody to fill in the gaps um, and get the dirty work, and that's more fitted for Harrison Bryant than it is for David Njoku, so David Njoku has some growing to do there. On his upside, I'm going to go 7 out of 10, lower than what most people think. I think he's more ready than most people think, but I don't think he has the potential that most people think he has because I have heard some ridiculous things about him, some George Kittle comps. I understand George Kittle went in the fourth round. He did too, but you know, I, this, I don't think this guy is George Kittle. Um, but again, nobody thought George Kittle was George Kittle, so fair enough, I guess, but I don't think he's George Kittle. I don't think you should expect him to be George Kittle. I'm not on that train at all. Um, I think he will be a solid starting tight end in the NFL. I think he could be a tight end one easy for a lot of teams. Um, I think he's going to be really great as a tight end two for the Browns, but I wouldn't – make him a feature tight end i wouldn't like mold your offense around this guy i don't think he's going to grow into that kind of tight end i would think more gary barnage than george kittle for harrison bryant but overall a great pick i'm giving this one an a i think it fills a need and it really frees the browns up to make some interesting moves too when it comes to camp the next pick here is nick harris the center slash guard out of washington some people had him ranked very high um, others are worried about his versatility. That's why I'm going to give him a value grade of 7 out of 10 here. Um, I think he is a little short to consistently play at guard, but I do think he can be in that competition for right guard right now. Um, I do think he can play it. Some think he can be a starter in the NFL. Um, I think he can too, but 
I think he's going to take some development, which is fine for a six-round pick. His out-the-box score, obviously, he's a six-round pick. He's not going to have a great out-the-box score, six out of ten. Um, he's probably going to be able to compete at guard, be more of an insurance plan for backup center. I don't think you're going to put him at backup center. I don't think you're going to keep him active a lot. So I don't think his first year is going to be filled with playing time or situational things. I think best case scenario for the Browns and himself is him avoiding the practice squad and being able to be on the active roster but inactive on game day. So a lot of jumpsuits in this guy's future for his first year, which is fine. He's much more of a developmental piece here. Um, and then his upside, I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. I do think he can eventually start in this league um, with the right coaching, which is tremendous for a six-round pick. So 7 out of 10 grade there. Um, and overall, I'm going to give this a B. I think it's a B. It's a good enough shot in the dark here with the interior lineman, probably a center, but he can maybe play guard. You see what happens there. But, you know, six-round pick. You get something out of it. You got something intriguing. That's all you can ask for, really. All right, the last guy that the Browns picked was Donovan Peoples-Jones, who I think is a pretty good pick here. You got pretty good value here. Um, and I'm going to give him a value rating of 8 out of 10. It's pretty high for a six-round pick, especially as late in the sixth round um, that he went. Um, a wide receiver with his res resume and athletic profile. I don't know how this class was that deep that he fell to the sixth round, but... Nonetheless, he fell to the sixth round, um, and that's tremendous value. A lot of potential in this kid for for not even any risk, really, a six-round pick. His out-the-box rating is pretty, pretty high for a six-round pick, also 7 out of 10. I think if he impresses in camp, if he shows more consistency um, and develops in that way, that he didn't really develop in Michigan. I think he could work his way into the wide receive, receiving rotation and get a handful of targets a game in this season. So active and playing, I think he has a role on this team if he can compete into that role, um, which is pretty good for a six-round pick. Also, to me, the way I see him is he's kind of a compromise, right? If you put Antonio Callaway and Higgins together and you had to compromise certain traits um, about him, then you could kind of get who Donovan Peoples-Jones is because he's the same size, height, and weight um, as Rashard Higgins, but he's not as great of a route runner, but he has pretty decent football IQ, so he's like kind of a downgrade in those two areas, but not too much. And then if you take Antonio Callaway, um, and then he's not as fast or as athletic as Antonio Callaway, but he's pretty athletic and pretty fast. But if you compromise those two and kind of merge them together, um, that you kind of get Donovan People Jones um, there, and I think that's good. I think he has a real lane for playing time on this team. I think I can really see where his role can be carved out if he shows out the camp and really does his thing. His upside is seven out of ten, not great upside. Um, he doesn't have tremendous upside, but I do think he can stick around in the NFL and be kind of a solid um, three slash four option in a wide receiving room, which is pretty good for a guy getting drafted in the late second round, sixth round. So, you know, good for Donovan Peoples-Jones. And I'm going to give this pick a grade of B. So B for Donovan Peoples-Jones. And for the overall draft, I, I can't help but give this draft an A. I think they addressed all the needs. I can't complain about any needs they didn't address or ignored. They addressed some of the depth concerns I had about the um, defensive line. And they got some linebacker. They got a linebacker. Um, and, you know, they did what they're supposed to. They made smart picks. They didn't reach for anybody. They didn't make any I'm smarter than the whole league picks. They just played it safe, played it smart, and got the guys that they needed to get. Um, so I'm very happy with this draft. No head scratchers, no frustrating things, nothing that made me angry. So good draft. I like what they did. But let me know what you thought of the Browns draft this year. Did you like it? Um, do you, are there some picks that you're not happy with? Or are you happy with everything that you did? Let me know in the comment section down below. Um, but again, guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and ding that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload. And as always, have a great day. Have a good night.